Uh, my name's Kevin Desmond. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of TransLink. And I want to thank everyone for joining us here today to celebrate a major milestone for both TransLink and Metro Vancouver. We have a number of elected officials and other dignitaries with us today that I'd like to both recognize and to extend my appreciation for their attendance and support. Jonathan Wilkinson, Member of Parliament for North Vancouver. Uh, the Honorable Andrew Wilkinson, Minister of Advanced Education Government of British Columbia. I was assured they are not cousins. <laughs> Mayors and councillors. Tony Gugliotta, Member of TransLink's Board of Directors. I'd also like to uh, welcome members of the community who've made time to be here. You are among the many voices that have championed greater investment in our region's transportation network. From the Better Transit and Transportation Coalition, Elizabeth Modell, uh, from down, representing the Downtown Surrey BIA and the, um, uh, representing the Board of Directors of the BTTC. BTTC chair, co-chairs Ian Black uh, from the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade, Gavin McGarrigill from Unifor, and Peter Robinson from the David Suzuki Foundation. Also with us today is Aaron O'Mellon, CEO of Hub Cycling, and Mary Collins, Director of BC Healthy Living Alliance. I think you can get a sense, we have a big coalition, a broad coalition, that's supporting the mission of moving people here in the greater Vancouver region. As I said, today is very exciting. It's exciting for me, it's exciting for our team at TransLink, for our board, for the Mayor's Council. We're here to celebrate the first in a series of service improvements that TransLink is delivering as part of its first phase of the 10-year vision that was approved less than two months ago by the Mayor's Council and the TransLink Board. We're embarking on some of the, um, uh, some of the major investments and in transit improvements and road and cycling improvements that are envisioned by that 10-year plan, and they're intended to help sustain the quality of life and prosperity of this wonderful region. And it all starts with a more frequent, with more frequent service on our rapid transit network, the Expo Millennium and Canada lines, as well as on CBUS. Combine these service improvements, which were implemented Sunday and yesterday, make room for approximately 185,000 more people on a weekly basis. That's more capacity, less cars potentially on the roads and our congested roads here in this region. Significant planning, public consultation, and technical work went into developing these improvements to ensure that these changes we're highlighting today could happen quickly and efficiently. And I just want to underline this. This is so important to us at TransLink to get these services on the road as quickly as possible um, to meet the needs of this growing region. To achieve this, we're investing in better use of our existing fleet by extending weekday peak service and increasing midday and early evening services uh, on weekends on the Expo and Millennium lines. This will mean shorter waiting times and more options for our customers traveling to some of the, uh, during some of the busiest times of the day. We're also increasing frequent peak service frequency on the Canada line um, on weekdays, which will help decrease wait times and crowding on the Canada line. And we're doubling CBUS service on Sundays and holidays. In fact, that started just this last Sunday. Sailings every 15 minutes between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Today's announcement is the first of many that we'll be rolling out during the course of this year um, and next year to help relieve congestion, to help relieve crowding, and ultimately to provide more and better opportunities for the traveling public and to relieve and improve the capacity of the overall, overall transit, transportation network. None of these changes would have been possible without the leadership of the Mayor's Council on Regional Transportation, our partners within the provincial and federal governments, and the hard work of the TransLink Board and, of course, the TransLink team. The collective efforts have brought the 10-year vision from a plan into action. The TransLink team is ready to deliver on this vision. And we're excited uh, uh, about being able to immediately start providing this service. Now I want to introduce uh, the co-chair of the Mayor's Council, Mayor Gregor Robertson. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here today. This is a milestone day for uh, transit improvements across Metro Vancouver, and uh, we are blessed to have the most advanced, integrated, and sustainable transit investment plan in the, in the country right now across Canada. We have set the pace with uh, a fantastic plan, a 10-year vision that lays out uh, the, the critical improvements we need to see in Metro Vancouver to alleviate traffic congestion and reduce pollution and maintain our high quality of life. We 
um, we are going to see action uh, beginning today. And uh, big thanks to uh, Kevin Desmond and the whole transing team for the follow through on the direction as the mayors uh, we uh, approved. Uh, as he said, under two months ago, the next steps uh, on this first phase of investment to improve bus and, uh, and rapid transit service around the region. We're thankful to the provincial and federal governments for their uh, support on the capital side of this to ramp up and, uh, and get uh, our first phase in action. And this is uh, the biggest investment since 2009 in uh, transit improvements for Metro Vancouver. So we're very excited about the improvements that are in store in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, we're going to see, uh, as Kevin mentioned some of this, an 11% increase in, uh, in Canada Line uh, 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 capacity at peak times. We've had uh, lots of challenges with Canada Line being so successful that it's full uh, during peak hours. And uh, we're, we're desperately needing the additional service. We're going to see a big boost there. And the, uh, the additional service in the Expo and Millennium Lines is, uh, is also being long overdue. And that'll help uh, to reduce the crowding that we've had on the trains uh, during rush hours. Uh, CBUS, we, we have enormous challenges with uh, traffic from the North Shore. We have needed uh, improvements in the CBUS for years. And it's great to see that uh, a doubling of CBUS service on uh, Sundays and holidays as well. Uh, so it's a, a big bonus uh, for the North Shore. This is really comprehensive improvements around the region. That's why the mayors uh, supported this so strongly, because it will make a difference in every community across Metro Vancouver. So there's, there's lots more to come. We're looking forward to the bus improvements around the region as well. They're critical for feeding into the, uh, the rapid transit. Uh, we uh, obviously need to see handy dart uh, improvements. Uh, that is a very important issue, and uh, our CEO has taken uh, a, a lot of time to ensure that handy dart gets uh, back on track and that service uh, improves, and the funding obviously is critical for that. We're going to see road improvements, and uh, that's going to be essential for the, the bottlenecks around the region as well, which have been well identified. So this is a, a, a fraction today of the improvements we're going to see in the 10-year vision. We're going to see lots rolling out over the year. Uh, the, the key piece that we need in these next few months is commitment on the major projects in Surrey with rapid transit, the Broadway line extension, and the Patello Bridge. Those are our three big projects that we really need to see uh, a firm commitment from provincial and federal governments on the capital so that we can keep the pace up. We do not lose any time building out those major projects in these years ahead. They will take many more years to do. In the meantime, uh, it's great to see the focus on improving the transit service around the region starting today. With that, I will pass it on to the uh, Mayor of Surrey and the Vice Chair of the Mayor's Council, Linda Hepner. Thanks, Gregor, and it's uh, great to see so many of you out here today. I can tell you that as I came in on the Expo line, that having increased uh, service there is going to be very valuable because even at 10 o'clock this morning, it was standing room only. So the, the, uh, what is very impressive about these announcements today is that it was just a couple of months ago uh, that, we, uh, that we came to uh, agree on the funding formulas in the region, and so within that very short window of time, TransLink has done a yeoman's job of rolling out these early uh, improvements to service, and I think it's absolutely commendable, and I want to thank Kevin Desmond and his staff for their uh, diligent work in making these first improvements happen today. It's a, an exciting day to celebrate, but I can tell you that the heavy lifting on phase two is uh, underway already. We're in the, uh, we're in the designing and planning stages of how that will work relative to the Surrey-Langley LRT project, the Broadway Corridor, and the Patello Bridge, who are, which are the most significant capital investments that will truly make a difference to the congestion in this area and really need all partners, the federal government, the provincial government, and our regional mayors all, all at the table making that happen in as quickly a, a time frame as we can. So today is a great celebration, but by no means is it the end of the road. That phase two funding is critical to our, uh, our overall region and to bringing to fruition the real mayor's vision for the 10-year plan. So I want to say thank you very much to the BTTC because I can tell you that on the ground and the work that they have done to engage our community as a whole in this region and 
have meeting after meeting and engage in every forum that is possible. Thank you so much for the work that you have done. Thank you to our federal partners who kicked this off with that $2 billion hit. And thank you to the province for being at the table. We're really going to need you at the table for this next part of phase two. Thank you. Thank you, Mayors. Um, as Mayor Hepner um, just mentioned, the Government of Canada is an absolutely vital partner in helping TransLink to meet our regional transportation needs uh, and the residents and to meet the needs of the residents of this growing region. We're very pleased to have with us today Jonathan Wilkinson, Member of Parliament for North Vancouver. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation to join you today. It is a pleasure to be he here with, uh, with Minister Wilkinson, um, the mayors and, uh, and other dignitaries to celebrate what is an important milestone achievement. Um, this is, uh, is important from an infrastructure and transportation perspective, uh, but as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, I see it as also a significant environmental announcement with respect to ensuring that we are improving environmental outcomes in the city in which we live. Just about a month ago, my colleague, the Member of Parliament for Vancouver Quadra, Joyce Murray, attended an event to announce that new Mark III SkyTrain cars have been ordered to improve rapid transit service in Metro Vancouver. And today I'm pleased to be joining the Mayor's Council on Regional Transportation as they launch the first of their new service improvements across Greater Vancouver. Investing in public transit creates sustainable communities and provides a better quality of life for the middle class and those working hard to join it. It's about helping Canadians get around safely, it's about reducing congestion, and it's about improving the environment in which we live. Our government recognizes that investing in infrastructure is essential to growing the middle class and equipping municipalities with the building blocks they need to support a high standard of living for Canadians and for their families. We also know that Canada's infrastructure demands have outpaced investments for decades and at significant cost. Underfunding infrastructure contributes to traffic congestion which pollutes the air and stifles the productivity of our workers and our businesses. It contributes to boil water advisories that affect entire communities. It means that our seniors have a harder time accessing essential services and it means that Canadians can't find quality childcare or affordable places to live. These are some of the key reasons we've been working with provinces, territories, municipalities and other partners across the country to design a long-term infrastructure plan. Phase one of this plan is already at work in our communities, supporting vital repairs to our aging pipes and roads, helping communities improve social housing and allowing transit organizations to replace aging signaling systems or to purchase new buses. Here in British Columbia, over $1.4 billion in combined funding is now available through two programs we introduced with Phase 1, the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund and the Public Transit Infrastructure Fund. So far, 62 projects have been approved under these programs, including upgrades to Canada Line stations as well as the expansion of the rapid transit fleet. But this is only the first step. The Government of Canada will provide more than $180 billion across Canada over the next 12 years for public transit, green and social infrastructure, trade and transportation, as well as infrastructure for rural and northern communities. This plan provides unprecedented levels of funding for projects across this country, projects that will help create long-term sustainable growth, build inclusive, sustainable communities and support the development of a low-carbon green economy. From important local projects like the one that we are celebrating today to large-scale developments that contribute to smart growth on a national scale, we will build 21st century infrastructure that prepares our communities to meet today's unique challenges and to prosper for generations to come. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wilkinson. Clearly, when you see the, the vision aligned so well with the different levels of government, with the federal government, TransLink, our mayors, and of course, our other key partner, the province of British Columbia. And I want to thank uh, the Honorable Andrew Wilkinson, Minister of Advanced Education for the province of British Columbia, for joining us today as well. Well, thank you. And on behalf of Premier Clark and the Governor of British Columbia, it's a pleasure to be here today on the traditional territory of the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, and Squamish First Nations to talk about the next step in our superb transit system here in the Lower Mainland. As I wrote in the Canada Line today, I was reminded when I started riding it to work in 2009, it was instantly successful. 
And now we have the chance to make it even better with higher frequency of service and a further 185,000 seats per week on the entire transit system. This is an expansion, as you know, of not only the capacity of the SkyTrain, Millennium, and Expo lines, but also the bus system and also the C-Bus system. So this is a comprehensive approach making use of the $246 million that the province of British Columbia has put into this first phase of uh, transit expansion here in Vancouver. This is because of hard work and collaboration at all three levels of government, municipal, provincial, and federal. And that allows us to serve the people of British Columbia with these service enhancements. We are thoroughly committed to transit in the provincial government, as shown by our $246 million investment in this phase. Transit ridership continues to grow, and this gives us the opportunity to make this an even more livable region and to make it an even more desirable place to live. We are delighted in December to open the Evergreen Line extension into Coquitlam, Port Moody, Burnaby, connecting into Vancouver in ways that have been waited for but have been looked forward to for a long time because that allows us to service a whole other area of the Lower Mainland with high-speed, rapid, reliable public transit. This is just the beginning. This is phase one. And we're now looking at the opportunity to have new SkyTrain cars, a new C-Bus, and the design and the early work for phase two. Because all of our governments are very keen to move ahead with phase two, and so the work to lay out the prospects for the Broadway line, the Surrey lines, uh, will proceed so that we can all be ready to expand the system as soon as possible. We want to help more people choose to leave their cars, just as I did in 2009 coming to work. It was a pleasure to be on the Canada Line every day, knowing that it was safe, reliable, affordable, and fast. Metro Vancouver is going to remain one of the most livable regions in the world, and all of us are working together to continue that trend so that we can all enjoy the quality of life here in a wonderful place to live with affordable, fast, reliable public transit. So thank you to all of the, the mayors involved. Thank you to Mr. Desmond for taking over TransLink in his very effective way, and to the federal government, the Government of Canada, for helping us to bring all this together. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Well, so that's, that's the alignment of the levels of government, municipal, federal, provincial. But of course, it is a partnership as well, and that means that we need partners throughout this broad-based community. We need consensus, we need agreement on a way forward, and then we need to make things happen. I would now like to in in introduce and invite to the podium members of the Better Transit and Transportation Coalition to say a few words about the transit service enhancements being announced today. I know the membership of this coalition cares very deeply, as deeply as we do here at TransLink, about the importance of an efficient, sustainable transportation network. And we are very grateful for their ongoing support in getting us to move forward. Ian Black is President and CEO of the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade, one of Western Canada's most active and influential business associations, which has helped shape this region for more than 129 uh, years. Garen McGarrigal is the BC Area Director of Unifor, Canada's largest private sector union, with more than 300,000 members across the country working every, in every major sector of the Canadian e economy, including our own Coast Mountain Bus Company. Please welcome uh, Gavin and Ian to the podium. Thanks very much, Kevin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Thank you for being here. Ministers, mayors, uh, Member Wilkinson, TransLink board members, uh, the great staff and leadership of, of TransLink as well. And of course, Elizabeth Modell, the chair of the board of the uh, BTTC. Uh, it's good to have the band back together. Um, it was late 2014 when 145 different organizations throughout this region came together. Uh, they were driven by the pragmatics of a referendum that lay in front of us at that point in time, but they were also driven by the need to engage in a coordinated manner and in a consolidated manner on a very big conversation. And if there's one thing we learned, one takeaway that we had from the referendum experience in 2015, that developing our region, whether for livability or for economics, getting around the region, moving people, moving goods, and getting it working is indeed a big conversation. Elevating that level of discourse, united with 145 different groups from labor, student groups, environmental groups, community groups, health and wellness organizations, small business, big business, is the, leg the, the legacy, the true legacy of those efforts in 2015, and it continues to be the number one issue of the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade. 
In our member survey, which we do twice a year, it is a mile and a half ahead of anything else in terms of the priority for our members, is transportation and transit in the Greater Vancouver Region. It's why I'm delighted to be here today to celebrate and to thank uh, all those involved in getting Phase 1 off the ground, the Provincial Government, the Federal Government, the Mayor's Council, and of course, a TransLink as well, for, de for adopting that 10-year vision. And indeed, it's worth celebrating. But my message to you this morning is actually quite singular in its focus. And it's formed by an experience I had just last week, Tuesday of last week. I got on the Evergreen Line extension, the third station out of 17 on the way into downtown, and I could not find a seat. That's a mere three or four weeks after that line is open. It's at capacity at the third out of 17 stations. It was a really encouraging sign that we're onto something here and that we're not in any way missing the ball. But we have to remember that this cannot be viewed as a standalone 10-year plan. We have to refresh this vision uh, pretty much on an ongoing basis to constantly begin looking out uh, 10 years so that we're looking at phase four, phase five, phase 20, phase 21. There really is no finish line to this exercise. We can't let that happen because if we don't, we're going to find ourselves 10 or 15 years from now precisely where we were five or 10 years ago, which is dramatically underbuilt with our region. We have to remember that of all the data that was flowing around during that referendum conversation, the one piece that you cannot deny is that a community the size of Port Moody, 40,000 people are moving into this region every single year because it's a great place to be. It's a great place to live, work, and raise a family, and we need to have the transportation to allow that to happen. Anyway, we have momentum on our side, and we can't lose it. So you have our commitment as a business community through the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade and the business coalition part of the BTTC that we are uh, very much still at the table, very interested in this conversation and willing to do our bit to help grow and enhance the region in the years to come. I'll turn things now over to Gavin McGarrickle from Unifor <coughs> with my thanks and friendship. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> So we're really happy to be here. We represent uh, labor and uh, obviously the people who operate the sea bus and the Coast Mountain bus and those who fix the buses. And they tell us <laughs> stories of what these changes are going to mean to regular people, to everyday people. You know, there's going to be workers that are going to realize that they can get home a little bit quicker to their families, or maybe they can get an extra shift uh, at work, or maybe they can not have to spend money on, on a taxi because they can actually have the actual improvements. We're going to see the improvements in the buses roll out. The first significant improvements in bus service in far, far too long, and that's what it means for real people that they can see that this is happening. Uh, normally, Ian and I would be arm wrestling each other. We're on different sides of the political <laughs> fence, but at the end of the day, transit and transportation is too important for everyone in the region. It's too important to our economy. It's too important to the people that are trying to get an education, the students that our members pass up every single day because they can't get out to UBC or to the different uh, communities. It's too important to our environment and our efforts to combat climate change. So for all of these reasons, we need to put aside our, our swords and, and come together and, and focus on a plan. And I want to commend the mayors uh, and the mayor's council for all the work that they've done because uh, there's a lot of cats in that room and getting uh, most of them to agree uh, is in itself uh, something to celebrate. So again, we're here for the long haul and we will be here for the long haul and uh, continue to push. But I have a message for regular people. When you see that extra service coming, when you see the ability to get home faster, judge the politicians by the actions. Judge it by, is the service increasing? Can you actually get around faster? People can throw out statistics all they want, but at the end of the day, what we're here today to talk about is tangible improvements to real people that will make our environment, our economy, uh, and uh, really just quality of life better for everyone. So thank you to everyone, and thank you especially to the mayors for all your hard work. Thank you, Gavin and, and Ian. So speaking of herding cats, I want, now want to invite uh, um, our speakers for, for a little photo op. We're going to unveil uh, a poster here. So we're going to do it right in front of the um, podium. And Mayor Hepner and I will help un unveil this. Yeah. 
from the federal government's perspective, we're, we're waiting for the mayors to come forward with a detailed plan, but obviously this, this uh, type of proposal fits very clearly within the purview of what it is that we are supporting with respect to the infrastructure project. So I would see strong support for phase two as the, the additional detail is flushed out. And on behalf of the provincial government, I think we said earlier that uh, the groundwork is already underway for phase two. And as my federal counterpart has just said, once the picture has crystallized and the plan is clear, there will be the usual engagement between the three levels of government to sort out the funding arrangement. So we're optimistic. It's uh, obviously in the province's best interest to have improved transportation infrastructure here in the Lower Mainland. And we look forward to receiving that proposal from the Mayor's Council. Well, the expansion is a big, complicated project. Phase two will be a very large uh, dollar item once it comes into play. And of course, it has to be clearly crystallized exactly what the plan will entail. We work with the Mayor's Council and with the Government of Canada to make sure that this is an entirely viable project. And then the funding issues will have to be resolved once that plan is on the table. put the plan together. Uh, we have the requests into the provincial and federal governments, so I, I, I'm yeah. not sure what what the minister uh, the minister is alluding to here, but we um, we need formal commitment of federal and provincial dollars to the major projects. We've had commitments from the Prime Minister and the Premier uh, to these major projects on Broadway and uh, south of the Fraser and Surrey, and uh, the next step as, uh, as TransLink has prepared the detailed uh, cases for the procurement is for uh, the dollars to be committed and secured from provincial and federal governments. So we, we're hoping to see those commitments in these uh, weeks ahead as they put together their next budgets. Uh, obviously, budget cycles are imminent, uh, and that's, uh, that, that's why we want to – that's what the urgency that we see is, uh, is commitments that are attached to, uh, to next year's budgets at those governments uh, that connect directly to the projects so we can go into procurement formally. I can't speak to what the contents of the next budget are going to be. Well, what I would say is within the, the infrastructure area at the federal level, we have received a bunch of information from the mayors. There's obviously a lot of work that has to be done for us to fully appreciate exactly what the contents are, and there's a back and forth that will happen between the mayor's council, the province, and the federal government as we try to come up with a formula that will actually address uh, the needs going forward. But as I say, this fits very squarely with, with respect to the, the, the campaign commitments that the, this federal government made. and. Uh, and it fits very squarely with the agenda with respect to renewing urban infrastructure and, and uh, pursuing initiatives that will actually improve environmental outcomes. So I would suggest that, uh, that this is something that over the, 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 the coming weeks and months, we will be able to find a way to get to some conclusion. The 10 year plan phase one that was adopted uh, less than two months ago, think of it as a basically a three year rollout, continuous rollout of service improvements. What we launched first, Sunday actually, was Sunday and holiday C bus. 
where we're going to 15 minute frequency during the course of that time, which is 7 a.m. to uh, 10 p.m. Later in the year, probably at the end of the summer, we will be 15 minutes all day, seven days a week on CBUS. We have to hire up crews for the, to add that extra vessel. Yesterday, <clears throat> we added peak period Canada Line service. We're able to put peak period service on Canada Line because there's f available fleet. That means during the busiest time of day, there'll be more seats available, less crowding, shorter wait times. On the Expo and Millennium Lines, also starting today, where we do not have available fleet today, although we uh, last month, as, as uh, the minister pointed out, <clears throat> we, we announced the procurement of new vehicles. Starting yesterday on Expo Millennium Line, we've expanded the time of the peak period service. Earlier in the morning, uh, at the beginning of the peak period, later in the morning. Same in the, in the um, afternoon peak. So it's a longer peak period, more availability, less waiting time. Starting in April, we'll be making major improvements, which will then happen every three months, largely over the next three years in the bus service. So that, that's an announcement still coming. We'll be focused first on overcrowded routes, but we'll also be adding new B-line service over this three-year service. We'll also be adding new routes to um, areas of the region that do not have bus service today. So stay tuned for that. And very importantly, we've added um, resources to add about 45,000 additional handy dart trips every year. Uh, so pretty comprehensive. We're going to be rolling it out repeatedly. Back to your question, people have less crowding, less wait times, and more, more opportunity over the next three years for transit service. Uh, well, uh, I think as you heard from uh, Ian Black, uh, the Evergreen line is off to a good start. Uh, we will have um, numbers for the initial ridership at the beginning of February, so we'll be announcing what those numbers are. We're waiting to, uh, until the beginning of February because uh, the service, as you know, started on December 2nd. The bus routes changed on December 19th, the week before Christmas, and then uh, those, those next two or three weeks were affected by the, the weather and the snow. So we're going to see, I think, the first really good numbers on exactly how the marketplace and our customers are going to start responding to the new service this month. Um, in, ter in terms of capacity management, we are going to be limited, uh, limited by our fleet. That's just a reality. So when we did the service pattern change uh, in September, that was intended to try to spread out the fleet as best as we can between the Expo and Millennium lines. Uh, once we see the numbers, and if we can make tweaks here and there, uh, we'll be able to do that. But the service changes, the service improvements we're announcing today are going to help some of that capacity. Uh, commercial Broadway will remain a pinch point. There's just there's no, no getting around that. We expect the new 28 cars that we announced last month that are on order uh, from our supplier to be here by the end of 2018. That's going to pr provide some relief. So until then, uh, I think we're going to have to manage as best we can around the shoulders of the peak period on the Expo Millennium lines. Oh, yes. So um, part of the mayor's 10-year vision, the new funding that we've been talking about, assumes the ongoing uh, funding that we get from the federal gas taxes, which, which is what we use to buy buses. So in order, for, in order for us to actually be able to add bus service starting this year, we're bringing on new buses right now. Those buses were intended actually to replace aged equipment. We've kept, we're going to keep that aged equipment um, um, in service a little bit longer because it's really more important to get the capacity out there right now than to retire those buses. But yes, over the next few years, we're going to be bringing in a lot of new buses. We can get you those details um, offline. For the um, uh, Broadway extension and for the Surrey um, light rail, uh, Newton-Guilford line, um, the public consultation start next week. Exactly where they are, I don't have that right in front of me. We'll let you know. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. That's the first time that the public will really be able to re-engage about both of those projects. I know that's very exciting for both of uh, my mayors uh, to my left, but it's a great opportunity to really get into the public discussion about these very, very critically important uh, new investments. But we will get you the information on, on where. I believe the information's up on our website now in any event on the time and locations of the um, outreach. Uh, 
Um, those alignments for both the so-called L line, the Newton-Guilford line, and, and Mayor Hepner might want to speak to it as well, um, and the Broadway extension, those have been in the plans now for several years. Uh, so the exact alignment um, and the start and end points, those are the reality. On the Newton-Guilford line, I think a lot of the public engagement is around what happens around the line. And I know this is critically important to the people of Surrey, critically important to the mayor, because it's, it, it's about making community, is what the light rail project's about. Out. The Broadway extension to Arbutus, um, I wasn't here when the decision was made to terminate it at, at Arbutus. I think it's a funding issue and a demand issue. The principal, the real crush of demand on the 99B line now is, uh, is, is really to Arbutus. Plenty of customers and students and faculty and workers going out to UBC. But for this first phase, that's where we really need to, to, to get our, our resources. As you heard from Ian, though, and I, I strongly believe this, this is just another phase of continuous development of the transit system. Will rail eventually get to UBC? I'd say that's probably a good chance. When? I don't know. Uh, but for now, we need to get to Arbutus, relieve a lot of that um, crowding um, on, on the bus service. I don't know if either mayor wants to respond to that either. Maybe I'll jump in on the, on the Broadway line and that uh, Millennium Line extension going west. Uh, in the mayor's 10-year vision, we, the agreement we made was in phase one to go uh, of the 10 years to go to Arbutus to deal with the, the incredible pressure in the Broadway corridor and, and population growth and job growth. So that was our agreement. If you look in the details of the 10-year vision, in the, uh, in the final two years, the planning for extending to UBC begins then. So at the, uh, towards the end of the 10-year vision, we start that planning exercise on how we, uh, how we increase the uh, capacity from Arbutus to UBC, which undoubtedly with uh, particularly you see the Jericho lands, uh, that's happened obviously since the 10-year vision uh, was approved by the mayors. But uh, there's going to be a lot, a lot more population growth on the west side. Uh, UBC continues to grow. So uh, I think uh, you know, we've heard loud and clear from uh, Maria Harris, who's the, uh, the director for the electoral area there, uh, and, uh, and people on the west side that improving that transit service will be important sooner than later. And that planning is, is right now expected uh, later in the 10-year plan. In terms, of, in terms of the LRT project in Surrey and Langley, we chose uh, the L line to connect both city centre to Guildford to Newton. That puts about 200 and some thousand people within a five minute walk to rapid transit. And then the connection for down Fraser into the Langleys will connect uh, Fleetwood and P Cloverdale and then potentially we could run in, a, in another phase at some other time down into to uh, Grandview and so Surrey area. So it was to make that connectivity through the entire city. Thank you everyone for coming. We will take a brief break and then we'll be able to do a strong separately.